The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some bulk pollen patty mix. And the way I do that is I mix it all in a bucket and I use a, a drill and I mix it with a big uh, mortar mixer and it goes pretty fast. If you're mixing smaller batches you can also do it by hand in a little bowl or in a tub. We're going to use AP23 which is the Dedant product and the AP23 stands for their 23rd formulation and uh, I really enjoy using this. The bees really like it. It's pretty simple to mix. Their directions are pretty simple. You take uh, one to one ratio so we're going to make a uh, 30 pound batch so we're going to do 15 pounds of powder and 15 pounds of sugar and then we're going to add enough liquid to that when we're mixing it to create a dough like consistency so the first thing we have to do is tear out our bucket so that we can pour 15 pounds of uh, sugar in here Dump this in until uh, the scale reads 15 pounds. There's 11. Whoa. Over, over went it there. A little bit too much. enough probably 16 pounds that's a 15 pound scale alrighty now we're going to measure out the uh, AP 23 and since like I said that's a 15 pound scale we can't put this on there and continue to add which would be very convenient we're just going to uh, dip into the bag here and fill our little uh, little measuring device several times until we have uh, 15 pounds worth of stuff. If you've never uh, worked with this stuff, it's very dusty and very messy. And uh, wearing a dust mask wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm just going to measure this at a time and see how it uh, gets everywhere and uh, it's a half pound it's almost a full pound so basically that's one pound right there so I'm not going to weigh all of these now that I see what it is, a full level scoop of this is, well I guess it's a little more, I guess I better weigh it. It's not that. There's another pound, so we're at two, and 13 more. Now that we have our uh, 15 pounds of powder and 15 pounds of sugar in there, we need to add the liquid. And uh, we're going to add some of the uh, one to one sugar syrup that we made earlier. And uh, what happens is this uh, syrup melts down the sugar that's down in the bottom and it starts uh, getting absorbed into the uh, powder and uh, they don't give you an exact amount is how much liquid to add you just add until you have a dough like consistency it's kind of like baking sometimes you just add the liquid until 
and get the right consistency. So it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> the main thing is that you want a patty soft enough that you can handle and flatten and put in the hives and something that's not going to harden right away before the bees can eat it. And so what I do to help that is I add corn oil, which adds lipids to the uh, patty. Um, if you read some of the literature and some of the scientific journals, you can add up to 4% uh, lipids to your protein and it'll help the bees digest it better and uh, gets they get more nutrients out of it. And the other thing that I add is some carol syrup, a couple of cups of carol syrup to this whole thing, and that helps keep the uh, patty soft for a longer time. And that helps a lot in the fall when they're taking them down slower. In the spring they take them pretty fast and so you don't really have to worry about it as much, but it's just one of the things that I add to my patty mix. And now we're going to speed this whole process up with a monster tool. And we're going to make a mess. And that's just, there's no way around it. I probably should have made a little bit smaller batch, but yep. Don't do that. <laughs> that's a mess. Now it's all over my pants and the floor. And thank God I'm not doing this in the house. Lucky for me. All right, so you just kind of keep adding your liquid until that's kind of how I should have done it. Now you can see it's starting to get more like a dough because it's getting stiff down there, and that's what you're looking for. So I'll keep adding a little bit, it's starting to incorporate. Let me uh, tighten my drill back. All right, so now we got this uh, tightened up a little bit, and it's really thick. So now I think it's about time to add the oil and the syrup. That'll give us a little more lubricity and it should start to flow a little better and we can kind of see where we're at um, to a five five gallon pail um, I add two cups give or take of the corn oil and two cups of the HFCS or chiral syrup oh I said HFCS oh my god that's really what corn carol corn syrup is. There's one. There's two. I can remember putting that stuff on my pancakes when I was little when we ran out of syrup. And uh, I know they say that stuff kills you, but I'm still here. <laughs> I guess if you don't you don't eat it in massive quantities, you're gonna be okay, just like anything else. But again, that keeps the uh, that keeps the patties moist um, after, so that they don't get hard really fast. All right. Syrup, maybe two, so that we can get this stuff going here. One and a half, and now that it's starting to uh, shrink down, if I feel like it's too uh, too soupy at the end, I can add a little bit more of the pollen patty back to it, the AP23 mix, but. At this point, I just want to get this thing going. It's uh, getting to be, should be working a little better than that. I guess I got a bucket that has a funky 
donkey bottom. And I would grab it with my feet, but there's so much stuff around it, I don't want to get my socks all full of that. So I'm just going to have to work it in. There we go. want to go along the bottom and make sure that you're getting all that sugar. Alright, so I mixed that for about five minutes. You can see it's uh, now it's more like pancake batter. Um, I wouldn't really call that dough. I guess there's uh, some kind of doughs that would be like that. But it looks more to me like cake batter or uh, pancake batter. So I'm going to add uh, another. Uh, scoop or two of the uh, AP23 to tighten that mix up a little bit and it is going to absorb that moisture uh, overnight you got to let this sit for 24 hours but uh, it still looks a little bit too loose to me so I'm going to add a little bit more uh, mix and continue to stir it That's a whole pound there. Eight ounces and eight ounces. I probably could have just went with half that, but we'll just go with this and see what happens. This is not an exact science. Um, some of the other the other pollen substitutes have better recipes. This one is every time it comes out a little different but the bees really do seem to like this one the other uh, the other pollen recipe that I use is a uh, or substitute that I use is uh, Ultra Bee which is another really good one um, that one the bees really seem to take it well as a as a dry powder too because it's that bright yellow color and almost looks like pollen they'll take this one dry too but I tend not to do as much dry pollen feeding this patties because we get such terrible spring weather we get rain and cold and wind and once you start feeding the bees and they're going on the brood and taking off it's you know if you stop feeding them then it shuts them down it stunts their growth so I try to just do patties because then I know that if we get a week of rain or a week of cold that they still have food and they're gonna still start brood brooding up and I don't have to worry about them not flying to get the uh, to get the pollen this is kind of a workout here if you can hear me breathing this is heavy i wish i had to clamp that uh bucket down i didn't know that i uh picked a bucket that had sat outside and froze and had a bold bottom nice spinning now that's what we're now starting to look a lot more like a dough um so i think uh 
I'm going to be pretty happy with that once I get this uh, powder incorporated in. I think, uh, yeah, it's a lot thicker. And uh, again, once it sits for 24 hours, and I don't mind it being a little thin because uh, the way I like to do it is I just take a piece of wax paper out to the hive and get a couple of dollops, put another piece of paper on it, squish it down, and put the hive back together. I don't necessarily make the patties in advance. I have done that, but uh, the stuff keeps better if you keep it covered in an airtight container. And these buckets have a, a gasket seal on them, so it, uh, it tends to keep the stuff from getting hard and a little fresher. And I've made the patties before, big boxes of them ahead of time, and then let them sit, and then they get hard, and sometimes they get crusty, and sometimes they get funky and then the bees don't really want to take it and, you know you can't blame them they want fresh food too so i usually just dole it out from the bucket and i'll put up a video of that process in the next day or two because this is going to be given to the bees tomorrow so well now that we have this uh pretty much complete I'm going to scrape this down and incorporate that all in there. I'm going to get that rim clean so that when I put the lid on, it seals. You can see now it's uh, it's got a, a little bit better consistency. And uh, I could probably still even add more, but like I said, I like to dole it out. And uh, I can use this batch. Or I can use uh, one of the big uh, cookie cookie things that we have to dole it out to the hive. And I like to give a pound or a pound and a half to each hive as I go. Um, depending on how big their cluster is, you know, you kind of got to watch. Because if you're in an area where there's the hive beetles, you don't want to give them too much. Um, that they're not going to consume you know fairly quickly otherwise you can have high beetle problem we have minimal high beetles up here in the north we have them but uh, they don't reproduce as bad as they do down south so we don't have to watch that as closely as some of the other beekeepers in other parts of the world all right well that is 30 plus pounds of uh of pollen patty there we did 15 and 15 but we also added all of that syrup which is heavy the one to one syrup and the oil and the hfcs which was just a couple of cups but you know it all adds up so we probably got more like 40 pounds of patties which is if you order a case you can get them in 10 um, and 40 pound so basically you have a case of pollen patties here um, and the only downside of this is this is heavy this is really heavy so uh, um, I know all of you guys on YouTube we're all young and uh, strong but as I get older some of this stuff it's <laughs> heavier and heavier and I start thinking to myself maybe there's a better way <laughs> and I do use uh, pre-made patties um, in the fall, I order these, uh, hopefully you can see that on the camera there, Ultra Bee Patties, I get them in these 40 pound boxes, and because uh, in the fall my other business, Kettle Corn, I'm really busy, and I don't have time to even do something as simple as this for, you know, by the time you get all the ingredients together and mix all this together, it takes, it takes a couple hours, you know, if you don't have everything right to where you're at, and I just don't have that kind of time, so I'll order a couple of cases of these, and uh, slap one patty on every week to my uh, hives and I'll do that for about five or six weeks in the fall and I do that for about five or six weeks in the spring and so this will probably last for a week or so and I'll make another one and as you can see I made a pretty big mess if you have if you want to make four or five of these at the same time it'd probably be the best way to do it but I always err on the side of caution because I never know how much the bees are going to eat so I don't want to waste it Here's another tip. Um, these things are called uh, handy wax, and they're uh, 12 by 12 pieces of uh, wax paper. Um, 
and they're you pull them out of here you lift this little thing up and they come out one at a time and so all I do is throw that down on the top of the hive slap a couple of uh, dollops of thing put another piece of wax paper over the top of it so it doesn't stick to the inner cover or whatever I've got on top or the other super and then I smash it down so I get these at Costco I'm not sure how much they are but they're in the uh, there's 500 in here so it'll last you a long time um, they uh, they're in the food area where the tin foil pans and napkins and plates are and they probably have them at food supply places like GFS or some of those other places if you don't have Costco in your area or you're part of the world but uh, I'm always looking for things to make my job easier and I love these things I don't have to mess with that big roll of wax paper tearing it apart and having it blow away in the wind I just have this big heavy box and I grab these one at a time as I use them and they're high quality wax paper and the bees eat it up and spit it out of the hive just like they do of any of the other kind of wax papers that are used on the professional patties. So hopefully that helps you out. You couldn't have a video without showing how you're going to clean up this big old thing. And it's kind of a mess. <laughs> but that's just the way it is. Every time I do this, I'm not sure it's worth it. But It's a lot of mixing if you do it by hand. And uh, it doesn't really take that long to clean this off. You got a nice spatch. I got this uh, spatch from Pampered Chef. My wife got it for me um, for honey, for cleaning out the uh, honey extractor. And uh, then we found a bigger one, so we use the bigger one now. And we use this little baby one for wax and bee food and all kinds of other. As you can see, everything gets all gunked up when you're uh, dealing with wax and bee food. So I try not to use my wife's tools for this kind of stuff because uh, that's not a good thing. And I'm sure some of you guys know that. <laughs> and if you don't, then you'll learn it. And if you're the girls out there that are watching this, you probably don't want to use your husband's stuff if he's the cook. Or if you're the cook and the beekeeper, you're lucky. Then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but I try to keep bee stuff and food prep stuff separate. It just makes life easier. And I'd say that's probably close enough. The rest of that will rinse off in the and the hose or if you had a really sunny happy day you could probably put it out somewhere and the bees or the squirrels or somebody would eat it that's the other thing about this stuff it's a protein and it smells like food and it, it does kind of attract uh, raccoons and some other critters because they can smell they can smell the uh, protein in this I don't know if it's the soy or what I don't know if they use soy in this one but you know it's it's food, so they, they can smell it, and they know that it smells like food. So, alrighty, there's a, a bucket of mix, and all we got to do is throw the lid on it, and we're ready. If you'd like to become a better beekeeper, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.